Today we're in the kitchen and I'm going to give you a little how-to on how to can the peas that we harvested. So stick around and we'll give it a go. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is make sure that your peas are, are clean and you get all the grit off the bottom of the, off the peas and you'll inevitably end up with some little flowers down in there too. So you want to get rid of those. So what I do is I usually give them a quick rinse in a colander and then I'll pour them into a bowl. Let the bowl kind of fill up, rinse them off real good, wait till you have enough water in there where stuff starts to float, and then you can take one of these and just kind of go through and you know, maybe pick up the little pieces that you see floating in there. Like there's a little leaf. Put the old peas back in the water because you can't get too many of them, right? That looks pretty good. And then put your colander back over here. let your peas strain. So while the peas are straining I'm gonna go ahead and get the water set up and show you what we're doing over there. Okay so now we're over at the stove. I've got two pots. I've got my canner and I just have a pot of hot water here. So I'm gonna turn them on. I'm gonna let them, well I'll turn this one on over here just to get the water heated up because that's what's going to go in our jars with the peas uh, when we put the lids on it. I'll wait on the canner and I'll let everything come up to temperature at about the same time. So I won't turn it on yet, but all right, we'll wait for that water to get boiling. In the meantime, we'll go over and start putting peas in our jars. Okay, you don't need a whole lot of utensils to do this. I uh, got this here canning kit that has a, a funnel and a pair of tongs and a debubbler with a magnet on one end so you can get your hot lids out of the water and a grabber for when these things are hotter than a $2 pistol and you got to put them in or out of the canner. I probably bought this on Amazon. It was probably like 10 bucks, so it's pretty easy to get a hold of. So with that said, let's see how many pints of uh, peas we're going to have here. So <clears throat> uh, there's one thing missing that I have to go get, and that is canning salt. I'll be right back. Okay, I've got my canning salt, and what I use is this. Um, it is not iodized. That's the thing you have to look for, for the salt that you put in your canning stuff. Not quite sure why, but they say that the iodine in the salts is not what you want for canning. So you get non-iodized or iodine. Yes, non-iodized. So what I do is just get the canning and pickling salt. That way I know I'm good. All right, so let's start. I'm just gonna get a coffee cup over here. And I'm going to start scooping these peas up and just pouring them in the jar. Leave about an inch 
of headroom. I will show you what they're talking about there. If you look on the jars, fill them up to that line right there and you're good to go. So let me press on that. I'll get all these jars filled or as many as I can. Woo, got a little much in that one. much in that one. Okay, so it looks like we're going to get about one, two, three, six pints out of this. So that's not so bad. That's a start. Which one that one? I had too much in that one, didn't I? Like I say, if you watch my other videos, we have a couple of pickings left. So we should be able to get, I don't know, maybe four or five more pints before this is done. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to take and put one half teaspoon of pickling salt in each jar. Okay, if you were doing these in quarts, <coughs> excuse me, you'd put a teaspoon in there. For pints, it's a half a teaspoon. So, well, they don't make these for these, do they? All right, modification to the plan. There, well, that's kind of close. As you might be able to hear in the background, uh, our hot water is, sounds like it's bubbling pretty good, so I'm going to check that out. And the next thing we'll do is add the water to the peas, so I'll be right back. Okay, so I brought the water over to the counter here where we're going to fill these up now. And you fill these up to that one inch line the same way we did with the peas. So just get them filled to about so the peas are covered. Wow, that one was almost perfect. Let's see where we're at, maybe just a splash. Oh, overfilled that one, didn't I? Losing peas, wasting food, Ron. I'm going to take these lids while I got this hot water. I'm just going to throw them down in there. The lids that they build nowadays are better than the old ones, and a lot of people won't even uh, they won't even heat their lids anymore because the seals have got so much better. You used to have to heat the lid in order to activate the glue or whatever that's on the lids, but. I guess they've come up with better ways to do that now, so that's not necessarily a, a necessity. I do it, crap, do it again. I do it primarily just to keep the, uh, let me see if I can do this. Oh, genius. If I can, I just do it so uh, 
I keep the lids clean and make sure it's, you know, kind of sanitary. But as good as these peas are, they're going to get eight before they can rot. So I'm not terribly worried about it. Okay. So now once you have that done, you take your little knife jobby here. And you just kind of poke it around and make sure you get all the air bubbles out. Let that water sink down in there. And go around the edges. And you can kind of see the bubbles that come up. You may have to top some of them off once you do this because water tends to disperse down into those gaps in the peas. That's no biggie. It's no problem. You can see a lot of little tiny bubbles pop up when you do that. And when you're done, or when the bubbles quit popping up, you know you're done. See them all? See all those little bubbles in there? And you just go around the edges. Just make sure that uh, all the bubbles quit. Alrighty. And then we look out, we got a little bit of topping off to do with our water on one or two, which isn't that big a deal. Which ones were they? Well, they all look pretty good. I think this one needed a little. And maybe this one. So we'll go with that. Alright, then go ahead and fetch your lids. Ah, we're getting a step. Take a paper towel. A lot of people use vinegar for this, but you can use water. Vinegar just tends to wipe it a little cleaner. Dunk it down in your hot water. And wipe off any gunk you may have around the rim of the jars. Just so you're ensuring a better seal with the lids. Okay. So, wipey wipey. One more. And we're done. Alright. Then you can fetch your lids out. Using your little handy dandy magnetic lid catcher. Yeah, that one's a little wonky. Might have been one we'd used before. And yes, you can reuse your lids. All right, then put your rings on. Tighten them about finger tight. Just to show you, look how pretty those are in there. Amazing. All right, so now I'm just gonna set these down. I have about, I don't know, two and a half inches of water in the bottom of the canner. So <clears throat> and primarily you want the water in there, not so it covers the top. You don't necessarily have to do that because it gets hot and it's gonna pressure can anyway. But just so the, it has enough water in there that it doesn't uh, doesn't dry up <coughs> while you're canning. Okay, so I have those all in there. We're going to let that come up to speed or temperature. I'm going to put the lid on right now. I'm going to take the weight off. And I probably have this thing turned backwards. There we go. <coughs> so on these, this is an all-american canner very nice canner i really like it. it has lots of room you've got these little arrows over here if you can see 
I can probably turn this so you can. You get the lid on there and then you line up the little arrows and you'll see these little catches will come underneath. They'll, they'll line up where your hasps go, like right here. Kind of want to give it an eyeball and make sure it's level. And then you start tightening down opposite sides. I don't get them crazy tight because this thing seals really well. But just tighten up the opposite sides. You know, tight as you can get it without killing yourself. <clears throat> Making sure it's pretty level, the lid's level. The seal is a metal to metal seal in there, so you treat it with some uh, food grade oil. Every now and then you just slick it up a little bit so it makes a good seal. And that's it, we're in the canner. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna wait until we've got steam coming out of the vent over here. And then we're gonna let that vent for about 10 minutes. And then we're gonna set this to 10 pounds, which is what we use at my elevation. It has three settings on it. It has a five pound setting right here a 15 pound setting right here and a 10 pound setting right here. We're gonna set that right on there like so. We're gonna let this pressure come up to about 10 to 15 pounds, somewhere in there. I've got the oven set or the burner set to high right now. And once that thing starts steaming like that, I'm gonna crank it back down uh, so I maintain about 10 or 12 pounds of pressure on there and then we're gonna let her cook once I put this on for 40 minutes and then after that we will let it sit until my pressure gauge comes all the way down to zero I will probably move it over to a side burner here so that there will be no heat on it to kind of expedite the process but that's where we're at right now I will walk. I will show you the uh, steps as they come up. But right now, we're just waiting for our our vent over here to start steaming. So I'll be back in a flash. Okay, so our steam started venting. I'm gonna go ahead and put the weight on there. We're gonna let it come up to about 10 pounds. Then I'm gonna turn the heat down and try to keep it between 10 and 15 pounds. Here we go. So we'll keep an eye on that. We'll watch our temperature or our pressure gauge come up over here. It's coming up eh, a little bit fast. Wait till we hear the jiggle, then we'll start bringing the heat down and let it cook for 40 minutes. So there you go. We'll be back when we reach temperature. Okay, so we have reached 10 pounds up here. Our jiggler is starting to kick off, so I'm going to bring our heat down. I've learned that if I take it down to about 6, that that gives me the kind of jiggle that I want. In the real world, you'd want about, I don't know, jiggle every, three jiggles every two to three seconds, maybe one a second or something like that, but it's okay. We'll be all right there, because I know I can turn mine down to six and everything will be good. So now I'll set a timer on here for 40 minutes and start it. And we will be back when the timer goes off. Then we're going to let it sit until it cools down completely. But through the wonders of film, that'll be mere seconds for you. So we'll be back after 40 minutes. Okay, so we have let this cook now for 40 minutes. We've got 12 seconds left. <clears throat> Once that's done, what I'm going to do is just turn off the burner and I'm going to slide the pot over on the stove. And the only reason I'm going to do that is just to get it off of the residual heat. So we'll try to be real careful with this. I know the pot is hot. So I'm just going to grab it. And slide it. Over here. 
Okay, now we'll wait until our pressure gauge goes down to zero. We'll leave, we'll leave the weight on there and we'll wait till that comes down to zero. Once that's at zero, we'll be able to open it up and see what we got. So, another waiting game, but we're one step closer. Back in a bit. Okay, we're back. Our pressure is down to zero. I can go ahead and pull this and we've got little to no steam coming out. So when you take the lid off of one of these, you take it off the same way you put it on. So do one side at a time or both, you know, opposite sides at the same time. Okay, give it a twist to unlock everything and make sure that you open it away from you so the steam will go out and not on you. Okay, so I'm gonna slide this. Ooh, that's a hot one. I'll slide it back over here onto this burner. Move the lid. Slide it back over here just to give us a little better access. Alrighty. Okay, and now I will pull them out one at a time. And there we have our canned peas. Looks like you could almost pack them in there a little well, once they, once they cool off and settle down, they'll probably be okay. Just doesn't look like you have a, a lot of room in there. <clears throat> yeah. I'll show you something here in a minute that there's a couple of things you can do to avoid and I didn't do it. I'll show you as soon as we get all these out. There we go. All right. If you can see the tops of these, and I'll try to get in close, closer anyway. Um, let me grab it with this. See how white it got the tops of the lids? You can avoid that by putting about a tablespoon of white vinegar in the water when it's boiling or when it's cooking before you start canning, I guess I should say. It's not a problem. You can wipe it right off, but just for aesthetics, it's kind of best to do it that way. So anyway, that is pretty much how we can our uh, peas. Um, I'll let these set until the lid set. Then I'll take the rings off of them and I'll put them in our pantry. So I'll show you a, a picture here in a second of when the lids have all popped. And that will wrap up how to can peas. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, like it. Uh, you can subscribe if you want. We do this kind of stuff quite a bit. So, or if you have any questions, you know, be sure to leave them down in the comments and I will try to answer them to the best of my ability. Or I'll turn you on to somebody who can. So with that said, I'll sign off. Give you a picture and give it a go. Take care. Well, there it is. That's a wrap on today's pea canning video. If you have any questions or comments or see something I'm not doing right, go ahead and put it down in the comments below and maybe we can both learn something. Until next time, give it a go.